Let's go over how easy and cheaply you could build these low tunnels out of just DIY materials you could buy at any hardware store. Before we go over how simple it is to build these, let me just tell you exactly why I'm using them. In both of these tunnels here, I have frost fabric, which is acting as a sort of insulative layer. Underneath this fabric, I have two rows of peppers on this side and one row of peppers on this one. The idea behind this is that, as you could see in San Diego here on the coastal climate, we have this period of the season called May gray and June gloom, where it's just gray overcast days for a couple months. It just doesn't get hot enough for the peppers to really thrive. So by building these little low tunnels, I'm helping to trap all the heat that I can. I'm also stopping all this cool coastal wind from chilling them out too much. So now let's go over how to build these. And also, by the way, I should mention that you don't have to just use this. You could use frost fabric, you could use bug nets, you could use shade cloth. These do it all. So let's go over how to build them right now. Before I show you the exact build of this tunnel right here, I forgot to mention some important considerations during the process. If you live somewhere where you do get seasonal rains, especially this time of year, this is what happens if you build a tunnel like this. The water will pull on top and it will actually weigh down the fabric and even potentially collapse your tunnel. So if you live in an environment where you do get rain, you don't want to build a square top tunnel like I have here, but I don't get rain basically from April through December, so it's not really a concern for me. So let me show you the hoops over there and how they shed water, because that's going to be what you want to do. So here we are by the rounded top tunnels, and watch what happens when I hit it with water. The water can just freely flow off the sides because there's nothing really to capture it and retain it on top, which will lead to the break of the tunnel. So if you do get rain or you get intense winds or hail, you definitely want to make sure you have a rounded top tunnel. If you're wondering about this bed, this was a lasagna flip that I then planted two different types of eggplant in, as well as a row of okra down the middle and a couple extra okras at the end. The idea is that these are very summer loving crops, both okra and eggplant thrive in the heat and that's really what they need to start really producing heavily. So that's why we're doing this protective cover on this bed here. And this one's going to be a little bit different because I want to do a more square style hoop since it's wider. So what we're working with here is a roughly four by eight bed in dimensions fully. But in reality, what I want to do here is from the end of that tape to where my finger is, is three feet. So I want the span of the hoop to be three feet. And then I also want it to be 16 inches tall. So right about here where my finger is. And then we're going to bury somewhere between six to 10 inches deep. So let's just go ahead and say eight inches deep, which will bring us to two feet. So what we need to do next is cut a wire that is two feet by three feet by two feet. So now we're looking at a seven foot long piece of wire that's going to be spanning the bed and creating the structure that holds up the net. In this case, we're going to be using frost fabric, but like I said earlier, you can throw insect netting, bird netting, or even shade cloth over the structure that I'm building over here. So let's go ahead and grab our wire. What we're going to be using is 12 gauge galvanized wire. You could buy this online or if you go to the big box store, it's very easy to find. Usually where they sell ropes, chains, fasteners, things like that, you'll see something like this. 12 gauge is just thick enough that I believe it's sturdy enough to hold up to anything that would happen in the garden. So that's what I would go with. I wouldn't go with a thinner wire. Now, the other thing you'll need is something to cut the wire with. So I'm using the Felco CPs. They're not actually garden pruners. So don't worry, I'm not ruining my garden pruners. They're designed to cut metal. And then we're also going to be using a bunch of landscape staples. You'll see exactly why we're using this, but these are kind of like the little secret to keep this whole structure rigid alongside with some sort of twine or string or whatever you really want to use. In this case, I'm using cotton butcher twine just because I like that it's cotton and it will break down without shredding any plastics or anything like that. So let's get into the initial hoop construction. And for that, what we need is the wire. So I'm going to be straightening this by hand, just kind of bending it against the direction it wants to bend. You can try to perfect the wire by making it really straight to look more like nice and neat. I'm not going to personally bother because it's going to be covered anyway and it shouldn't really affect the function of the actual structure itself. We're constructing exactly what we want and need. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't need to look perfect. It doesn't have to be measured perfect. Just kind of make it roughly the dimensions you want and I guarantee you it'll work just fine. So here we are. We have a seven foot-ish piece of wire, maybe a little bit longer. And so right here is 24. And that's going to be where I bend it. So that'll be leg number one. Once I have that bend in, I can start working the wire to make a roughly straight piece of wire. Okay, so actually pretty good and it really doesn't require much force. You don't need to be strong or anything to do this because it's very bendable. Now what I'm going to be doing is straightening out the top part. So let's come on this side and about two feet. Actually, yeah, looks like I'm basically just at eight feet here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and trim this just for consistency so that it's closer to the actual dimensions. All right, so there's the actual structure itself, a piece of wire bent into a sort of partial square. And what I'm going to do now is sink this in, roughly eight inches, I'm not measuring anything anymore, and then sink it on this side as well, roughly eight inches. So there we go, strain this out a little bit. You could do a little bit more bending if you want. And there's our first tube. It really seems like this won't work, and that's because on its own, it really won't. So. The next step is going to be what really literally ties it all together. So for now, what I'm going to do is cut out the rest of these hoops. We'll come back and I'll show you exactly how to make this structure actually rigid and functional. Now that we have the hoops in place, it's time to make them rigid. Now, since this is a double wide, meaning that I'm doing something like three feet across, I'm going to be doing twice as much support stakes across the top. So let's get into that right now. What you're going to need is your landscape staple, and this is where your twine or string or whatever comes into play. I like using these really deep, long staples. These are, I think, 10 inches, maybe 12 inch staples. And um, you could usually find those online. So what I'm doing is I'm just tying a bunch of knots. I'm not a knot expert. So I'm doing like three regular overhand knots and that should make it slip proof. And then what I'm going to do is actually take the stake and bury it just about six inches to a foot out from in front of your bed. And this ground over here is nice and hard because I didn't broad fork over here. So the staple is actually going to be anchoring very effectively. So that's buried in the ground. I'm gonna grab my twine now, and here's what we're going to be doing. I'm going underneath and then over the top. So now I have this little kind of knot here. And I, as I'm going, I'm going to be adjusting the tension of this and maybe even doing a third pass like this to create a sort of pseudo knot up here now this is kind of self-tensioning a bit. And the idea behind this is that you want the hoop to stay roughly where it was originally, and this string is going to be counterbalancing it. So as I go to the next hoop, same exact thing. I'm gonna go over, and then we'll do another wrap that way, and pull that tight. So now, even just attaching these two, you now see that they're working together. They're now much more rigid. It's a actual structure now instead of just a collection of hoops sitting out here. And we're gonna do one wrap on this side, another wrap on that side, and that should make the whole thing super rigid. And I'll show you just how rigid it is once it's all strung up. Now the string is in place. And if you see when I touch one of these hoops, every single hoop moves together. They're a lot more sturdy. They're less likely to flop over from one side to the other. And now we can move on to actually putting our cloth and supporting it over the structure. When it comes to choosing the dimensions of the fabric itself, you want to consider having a little bit of a gap on either side. So across the top, we know it's three feet, and we originally cut these to be two feet, but then we buried an extra six inches. Now that means the total span of the original piece of wire was seven feet long, and actually that's going to be the width of the cloth that we cut. That's because we already buried six inches on either side. So that gives us an extra six inches of cloth to hang out on both sides and still cover the whole span of the bed. The other consideration, of course, is the length, which is roughly eight feet. You can either decide to leave it open on the end of the tunnel, which will allow a little bit more airflow through, but still trap some heat, or you could pull it tight on either end and fully seal in the plants that you're growing. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to have probably an extra two feet of cloth on either side so that you could really bunch it down and pull it straight. So in this case, if this is a roughly eight foot span, I would probably cut it to around 12 feet just to give myself extra wiggle room. In this case, since it is eight feet and I don't need it to be fully sealed, I'm gonna probably just cut it to 10 feet so I have a little bit of an overhang, but I won't fully seal the tunnel. So now let's go over to my area where I keep my cloth and I'll show you how I cut it and talk a little bit about how to choose cloth and sort of the proportions that they might come in. All right, so now we're talking about fabrics and Cosmo decided that he had to come help. He's being very pathetic here, <laughs> sitting in front of me, but I have a tape measure here. And from that end to this point over here is eight feet. And what we need to do is cut some fabric that is eight by 10 feet in dimensions. The way that this Ag19 frost fabric from Agrabon came um, was actually in a 10 foot wide by 100 foot long spool. So now I want a 10 by eight foot section. So instead of actually cutting the width, what we're going to be doing here is cutting eight feet of length because the width of this is already 10 feet. I don't know if that was a little bit confusing, but it's just <laughs> the way that these dimensions are. 
So what I'm going to do here is bunch up my corners. So there's my starting point right there. And I'm going to unfurl this until I get to that eight foot mark. All right, so where, where my hand is over here is eight feet. So now I'm going to just make sure that I'm still true to the dimensions here since it moved a little bit. I need you to move, Cosmo. All right, so I feel like pretty confident that this is going to be the dimension I need, roughly eight by 10 feet. So I'm gonna grab my knife and cut it right here. All right. Let's bring that back over to the structure and see if I got the dimensions right or wrong. I just realized I said I needed a seven foot cut and I just did an eight foot cut. So this might be a little bit longer than needed, but that's totally fine. You definitely want excess rather than not enough because then you're just not going to be able to cover your tunnel. So now the fun part, figuring out how to support this. And the other bonus about these strings, by the way, is that they help keep this cloth even more upright off from drooping onto the plants. So it's actually a multi-purpose kind of thing. So I'm gonna start by just trying to drape this over, make sure that we're good, have plenty of excess on this side, have good overlaps, and I have just enough excess on this side as well. Now that we have the fabric ready, let's go ahead and show you how to support it. You're gonna want a landscape staple on every corner of the structure that you're trying to support. And then we're also going to need some more of that twine. So now let's actually stake this down and get it really nice and tight. Now, there might be a better way out there. I honestly didn't look, but this seemed to work really well. It's kind of what I just figured out while doing it over on the beds back there. What you're going to do is make sure, first of all, that your fabric is lined up roughly how you want it. That looks good to me. And then you're going to take the corner of that fabric. So here's the corner. Take your landscape staple. And then what we're going to do here is literally tie an overhand knot like so right onto the staple. This is really, I think, the key to making this really nice and rigid. And one overhand knot like that seems to be plenty tight. Now what you're going to do is place this, I like to place this somewhat in front. So like right here is the hoop support. I wanna make sure the stake is on the inside of that. That way it kind of creates a tight tension wrapping around the structure itself. And it's not just flopping out straight out. So I'm gonna go in right about there, about two or so inches in from the actual support stake here. Sink that, take some twine again. And then, so here's the knot of the fabric. What we're going to do is take this twine and actually tie a knot on the inside of the knot from the fabric. And you'll see why in a moment here. Like so, do another one, and there we are. So this is the original first stake. Let's go ahead to the other side and do that one so we can make this line up very nicely. So all we're doing here is tying off the fabric itself. We're not going to be putting the twine on because the twine is still attached to the spool there. But I wanted to make sure that both sides were at least equal to some level and that way it's not going to be all annoying once we actually string this up. And now here's the secret. This piece of string is going to go on the outside of the fabric like so. So right here You'll see it's going on top and I'm going to bring this down to the other side. And now we're going to repeat the procedure over here. And now I have the full tension of this fabric in my hand. So wherever I put this is going to dictate that tension. But luckily, since this is a staple, we can always move this. So right here, it feels nice and tight. When I tug on this, I feel tension on the cloth. So I'm going to sink it right there. We have this weird rock here which will make this a little bit different than most people's. So now this is extremely tight. You can see when I pull this, it all becomes tensioned. Now we're gonna take that string and watch this. That string is going to be keeping this fabric from flopping over and flying all over the place. So we want this to be very tight on the string itself. So let's go ahead and cut this. And we're going to tie it onto the inside of the staple again. And try to cinch this knot down as tight as you can you don't really want a lot of flexibility in this line. Go underneath, and then I'm gonna do another two overhand knots. And then I'm gonna push the staple in as much as it allows. And now check this out. This string, tight as a drum, that's gonna keep this from flopping all over the place. So now let's go do the other corners. Here's the staple where we tied off the other corner of the cloth. I'm gonna do the same thing that I showed you earlier. Take my twine, tie a couple overhand knots in like so maybe one more, and then plant that staple down. 
grab your line. And now once we get to the other side, what we're going to do here is try to pull the extra tension left on this cloth here, because this last corner is going to dictate how sort of snugged up this whole structure is. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling a little bit on this side, pulling a little on the other side, until it looks like it's squared up on the top here. That's going to be where I want that last knot. So I'm gonna put my staple around that point. This will be the longest, biggest knot. And now we're gonna move that staple back onto the inside of the leg again. And just as a reminder, this line here is keeping the fabric in place and stopping the wind from blowing it over. It really helps keep the whole structure nice and tight and keeps the fabric from flopping all over the place. So now check this out. Everything's moving together because they're all tied up together. And this is now very tight. I left a little bit of gap here so that air can still come through. But overall, this is going to increase the temperature in here quite dramatically. I'll try to include a thermometer in here and do a comparison with the outside. So here I have one that's on the outside. Same area, same amount of sunlight, and it's getting a temp of 77.9 Fahrenheit. So I come in here, I have another one of these, and this one is reading 90 degrees. So we're looking at a temperature delta of basically 12 degrees, and that's pretty substantial. It's going to make a huge difference on how fast these things grow. That's exactly why I do it. If these temps really get much more above 90, like say 95, and it's probably going to happen since it's gray right now, I will probably want to add more ventilation. So what I'm going to do is open up the ends of the tunnel instead of leaving them closed, like I showed you in the build from this video. I actually haven't tried this before, but I'm assuming it's going to work in the same way. So what we're going to do here is I already have a leftover hoop. I'm going to just bend out another one from this master spool. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to just go until the bottom of the bag. I'm not gonna measure anything. Then I'm going to wrap it on top of the other hoop, like so. And then visualize where the bottom of the bag is. Cut that. Go in. All right. So now I have this structure here, which should keep the cloth from sinking down on top of the plant. And by the way, this is a peanut plant. Um, and peanuts are another plant that are very notorious for needing a lot of heat. Here in San Diego, we don't really have it. And I've actually never really successfully, I mean, I've, I've grown peanuts, but I've never got a lot of them. So I'm hoping that this will actually transform my peanut game. So what I'm gonna do here is I just have a small piece of leftover cloth that I'm hoping looks like it's going to be close from a previous project. Try to save this stuff as much as you can since it's plastic. I wish there was a better alternative, but I honestly can't think of one. So I'm gonna actually, you know what? I'm gonna just tuck this into the bag itself. Go ahead and bury it into the soil a little bit. Like so just around the perimeter. And this is another thing where I probably won't, you know, I'm not gonna leave this on here forever, um, but I do wanna leave this on here until we actually get some sunlight again. Looks like I buried a little too deep on that side. Okay, just like so. And since this is actually buried into the soil, the other one is kind of floating on the soil, this one will actually probably trap even more heat more effectively than the other setup we did. So that's another tip. If you do want to trap all the heat entirely and you really need that extra heat, you can bury the cloth into the soil and basically cut off any airflow. So here we are. Funny little structure. <laughs> all right, so this isn't gonna win any beauty contest, that's for sure. But this is going to provide a very effective boost to these temperatures, and uh, hopefully I'll get a really nice amount of peanuts. Now the other thing, of course, that we can do here is just take a piece of twine, come at the base here, and then push the string down until it's near soil level. All right, there we have it, a nice little bonus temperature booster for my peanuts. So it seems like if I put another hoop, it would be a little bit more round because I basically made a square here, but I'm not really worried about it. I'm just trying to trap as much heat as I can so I could get those peanuts. And that's it, guys. You could do whatever fabric you want. Like I mentioned, don't forget, you could use shade cloth, insect netting, bird netting, whatever it is you need. These little 12 gauge wires are really cheap. This is very easy to do. If you're not perfectly worried about exact rows and aesthetics, very easy to do at home. Anyone could do it, requires no strength or anything special. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you guys around. We'll see if we get any peanuts this year.